How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. And today we're going to be talking about Farmy did 1.35 billion in shares traded today. I must say, wow. And it also ended up having a great day inside of the market. There was a lot of volatility in this play. We had it on the daily morning watch list as well. And I was telling you guys, look out for those areas as far as seeing a test around 50 cents. It ended up testing just a bit above that. But of course, this is why I always say it's important to have a strategy and game plan, especially if you're trying to protect your profits. I won't waste any more time. Let's jump into the agenda. If you're new to this channel, I just wanna let you know we have timestamps down below inside the description. But if you are a shareholder or you're thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you watch this full entire video. So the first thing we're gonna go over is the technical analysis. We're gonna be taking a look at the overall price action. We wanna know support, we wanna know resistance, and we wanna know some levels what we need to look forward to. I was telling you guys in regards to the technical setup, things can get look very interesting and I made sure I wanted you guys to see the overall picture. So make sure you watch that portion, all right? And then we're gonna to be taking a look going on Fintel at the short interest information. We want to know how shorts are heavily vested in this play. Have they been increasing their positions? Have they been scaling back? We're going to find out. And then we're going to take a look at the order flow distribution. We want to know where institutions loading up on shares while FAMI was showing strength. I feel this is very key because it could have an impact on the stock price. And then when all of that is done, we'll be going into the final thoughts and as well as some more details. So let's get to it. So we're going to be doing a test technical analysis for Farmy. Let's see how it performed on the day. So ended up closing at 46 cents, being up 36.03%. On the low, it tested 37 cents, and then on the high, testing 53 cents. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, it traded at 1.325 billion shares with an average volume over 10 trading days at 312 0.255 million shares. That is crazy. I was talking about this in the previous video. We got to have above average volume. We definitely did get that today. Now, the chart we're using is a one year daily chart. I wanted to kind of zoom out to show you guys what Farmy can potentially pull off. But first, let's go over what the RSI is down below. It is right around 67.2. Nine. So just keeping this in mind, we have been on quite the run-up, so that is no surprise. Now, as far as for the price action is concerned, we ended up reaching a high of the day of 53 cents before being hit with some selling pressure. And you could tell this has been an area of resistance in the past for farming. So if we are able to actually get past it, then the next level that I'm going to be looking for us to test will be right here around 57 and then looking for that move so we can get past 60. But one thing that I want to show you as far as where we tested on the low, it was around 37 cents. And the good thing about it is this is right above the 50 day. So if we could use the 50 day as an area of support and then have that momentum coming through the play and as well as that increased volume, then that 60 cent is very likely to happen and if we could pass 60 cents then the next level that we would need to pass will be right here around 65 cents and as you can see we have a big time gap that needs to be filled here so by passing 65 we could easily get to this level here right around 78 cents very quickly so that's why I want to make sure that you keep this on your radar we talked about it on the daily morning watch list inside of the discord and yeah Let's see how farming performs going into tomorrow. So we're going to take a look at the short interest information for Farmy. As we scroll down on the page, short shares availability stands at 4 million updated 28 minutes ago. And then for the short ball fee rate, it is at 9.67%. When we take a look at the history of the short volume ratio, we can see for the close of the 27th, it was at 56.59. The close for the 28th was at 55.96. And as you can see, to close for the 29th being at 54.05. So we are seeing a downtrend here, but one thing that is very clear, Farmy continues to have short squeeze potential. As long as we have volume and buying pressure coming through the stock, you want to continue to keep this on your radar. If the updated numbers come out by the time I put these videos together, I will be talking about it inside of the final thoughts. So now let's jump into the order flow. Now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for Farmy. 
army. So on the inflow, it was 135. And then on the outflow, it was 131. When we take a look at the breakdown, you can see we had 20.87 million on the large. All right. And we also on the medium, we had 83.77. And then on the small, we had 30.10. On the outflow side on the large, it was 23.77. And on the medium, it was 80.44. And then on the small, it was 26.62. So by taking a look at this breakdown, we could see on the retail side, there was a lot of buying when it came to this stock, but also there was a lot of profit taking on the other end. But of course, that is no surprise whatsoever. And then when we take a look at what happened on the medium, again, inflows winning out and one thing to keep in mind though a lot of profit taking and then when we take a look at the large scale orders in the last five days you can see for september the 30th we have an outflow day of 2899.89 it's pretty much taking the difference of the fact that we had 23.77 million in large scale orders for outflows while we had 20.87 million for inflows so what this tells me there was a lot of institutions who were buying up shares today in farming, but also there was a lot of profit taking institutions that were selling out. This is part of the reasons why we saw a lot of pullbacks inside of the play, but it ended up recovering and showing strength very quickly. And it's part of the reasons why I always emphasize having a game plan and I let you guys know you have to do your homework and do your due diligence before getting into this play. So now let's jump into the final thoughts and we'll go over some more details details as well. So for my final thoughts for Farmy, I can't wait to see how well it performs going in to tomorrow. We already talked about how important volume is for this stock and seeing it do 1.3 billion, it, 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 it's crazy. Crazy. I haven't seen that in quite a while. But with all that said, as far as the pullbacks are concerned, this is something that you must know is going to happen with this play. I also told you about the shady institutions that are also a part of this play. So I just wanted to make sure that you had a game plan. I was talking about as far as pullbacks are concerned, certain levels to look out for. And as far as where you want to see it start testing on the highs, yes, like I said, it ended up getting just a little bit above 50 cent, but we want to look forward to seeing a stronger move. This is essential so we can look forward to seeing a potential gap fill like I was talking about inside of the technicals. Another thing that I also want to go over going on Fintel, we can see this play has short squeeze potential. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to get the updated numbers before putting this portion of the video together, but I'm going to assume that it's going to continue being over 50%. And I also want to bring to your attention of the fact when I was taking a look at the pre-market, it was insane with the amount of volume that Farmy was actually getting. So you want to want to see a continuation of this going into tomorrow, because if it does, then we can look forward to seeing a very strong move at the open. I tell you guys this repeatedly on the channel. Do not focus too much on what's happening inside of the pre-market, except for for volume, but as far as the price action, it's easily to be manipulated. And as far as what you see in the after hours, the same thing goes. Yes, in some particular cases, depending if there's a news catalyst and so on, and you can see certain type of price action, but if nothing has really changed, things have just remained the same and you're seeing price action, do not be bothered by that whatsoever. And this is why I myself, I do not like trading in the pre-market at all. I rather wait going into the open. But if I did decide to trade in the pre market, I'd want to get into a position right at 4 a.m. Whether it's at 401 or 402, it's not good at other times outside of that. Sometimes in some cases, it's good to get into a position before eight o'clock because again, many people are saying, yo, eight o'clock, many of the other brokers start coming on and people start buying and following. Again, you can go ahead and do that, but I know for myself, I have very strict rules. I'm not trading the pre-market unless I'm going to start at 4 a.m. and that's what it is. And also, since this is a pen any stock at the end of the day, make sure you're taking your risk management very seriously here. I know you guys are probably saying, Dre, you keep talking about this, but you know what? I think it really needs to be emphasized here. Do not go in with money that you have an immediate need for. I made a joke about this in the last video, but I'm being very serious here. If it's the type of money that you're going to need a month from now or a week from now, do not put it inside of this play. Use money that you're not afraid to lose. I'm going to keep saying it in all of my videos. Maybe not all of them, but whenever I get the chance or whenever it comes to my mind, because I want to make sure that you guys 
guys are not being left as bag holders just in case the play goes the other way. And also on top of that, it's just better for your overall habits to make sure whatever money you're putting into the stock market when it comes to speculative plays, you're going about it the right way. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll be talking real soon. Oh, 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 oh,